President Trump is enjoying his highest approval marks since taking office. And that's a difficult place for the 20 plus Democrats vying for a chance to take him on next year. It's a tough place for them to be. So tonight, correspondent Peter Ducey looks at what they're planning and why the president's numbers are up. There are so many Democrats running for president, even the most experienced operatives are having a hard time keeping track. This is all 22. No, this is the 22 candidates who are running. And all 22 face a tall order. President Trump's approval rating is climbing. 45 is at 46 percent, according to Gallup, his highest ever and higher than Barack Obama at this point in his first term. A Trump campaign spokeswoman tells Fox President Trump continues to rise in the polls as Americans everywhere take note of his historic accomplishments. Also historic, black unemployment, 6.7 percent right now, lower than the Obama or Bush years. What the hell are they going to do to beat that? Joe Biden is trying. The front runner spent Sunday with a primarily black congregation in South Carolina. How critical is South Carolina to your path? Critical. Mayor Pete Buttigieg wasn't such a draw in South Carolina. Politico reports, quote, he scheduled a meet and greet Monday in Orangeburg, a city that is 76 percent black, but only a dozen or so people of color showed up in a crowd of more than 100. How do you plan to speak to African-American voters specifically? Part of it is by uh, laying out uh, an agenda on the issues that black voters are asking me about most often. The mayor made a bigger splash, insisting God isn't a Republican. I think it's also important that uh, we stop seeing religion used as a kind of cudgel, as if, as if God belonged to a political party. And, and if he did, I can't imagine it would be the one that, that sent the current president into the White House. Mayor Pete is having a tough time denting Biden's big lead. One AP headline reads, Biden's strength fueled by perception of his electability. And now he's comfortable enough in the lead to laugh off the controversy that consumed the run-up to his campaign. That's very nice, thank you. Biden's lead over other Democrats is big, but crowds at his events aren't. There was extra space for supporters to move around at today's event in Nevada, staged at a union hall much smaller than venues regularly filled up by the candidate right behind him, Bernie Sanders. Shannon? All right, Peter Ducey on the 2020 field. Thank you. This is a Fox News alert. The Trump administration's Remain in Mexico policy for asylum seekers getting a big boost from an unlikely source tonight. The San Francisco-based Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is allowing the Trump administration to continue to require some migrants to remain in Mexico while their asylum cases are pending rather than being released into the U.S. Several immigrants' rights groups had sued the Department of Homeland Security over the Remain in Mexico policy. They say it puts migrants back into harm's way. But in upholding the policy for now, the appeals panel finding in part tonight that the Trump administration's diplomatic efforts with Mexico appear to be paying off and that the likelihood of harm is reduced somewhat, they say, by the Mexican government's commitment to honor its international law obligations and to grant humanitarian status and work permits to asylum seekers. Well, voters in Denver rejecting a push to make it the first U.S. city to decriminalize the use of magic mushrooms. Ordinance 301 would have decriminalized the possession of the psychoactive substance found in those mushrooms. Supporters argued it could help treat depression and anxiety. But in the end, just over 54 percent of Denver residents voted down that measure. Well, a politician from Pennsylvania verbally harassing several pro-life advocates praying outside of Planned Parenthood office. He's facing backlash tonight here to react. Richard Fowler and Lila Rose, they're next.